Trigonometry, Chapter 6, Inverse Circular Functions and Trig Equations, Section 1, Inverse Circular Functions, Video 5, Composition of Trig and Inverse Trig Functions. This series is based on content from Pearson's Trigonometry, 12th edition, by Lau, Hornsby, Schneider, and Daniels. In the previous video, we discussed using a calculator to evaluate inverse trig functions. Specifically, for calculators without inverse secant, inverse cosecant, or inverse cotangent, we use these three following identities, which is what they are, identities. And these are true for all x in the domain of the respective inverse trig functions. In this video, we explore how to evaluate the composition of a trig function with inverse trig functions. For example, evaluate the following without a calculator. Evaluate the following without a calculator. Sine of cosine inverse of 5 thirteenths. Hmm, how can we do this? Let's think about this. What is cosine inverse of 5 thirteenths? Well, I don't know the exact value, but I know that the answer to a cosine inverse problem represents an angle. Let's capitalize on that. Let's analyze the in inverse trig function first. The output of an inverse trig function is an angle. So we're going to let cosine of inverse, we're going to let cosine inverse of 5 thirteenths equal theta. This means that cosine of theta is equal to 5 thirteenths. Why is this important? Well, what do we know about cosine? A lot. We know the range of cosine inverse is quadrants 1 and 2, and also 5 thirteenths is positive. So this puts us in quadrant 1 because the range of cosine inverse is quadrants one and two. We are doing, yes, we are doing uh, an inverse cosine of a positive. So our cosine would have to be positive, which is in quadrant one. Now in quadrant one, X and Y are both positive. We'll, we'll need to know that later. This one's kind of obvious. Now, as far as knowing that cosine of theta is 5 thirteenths, we can deconstruct the 5 thirteenths into two separate values based on the XYR definition of cosine. The XYR definition of cosine is X over R. And since cosine of theta is 5 thirteenths, we can let X equal 5 and R equal 13. I realize this is not a unit circle, but the size of the triangle and the size of the circle is irrelevant. And since X squared plus Y squared equals R squared, we can substitute 5 for X, 13 for r, and solve to get y equals 12. It is worth mentioning that technically when you solve 5 squared plus y squared equals 13 squared, that gives you y equals plus or minus 12 algebraically. Well, we already determined that y was greater than 0 because we're in quadrant 1. So for this theta, we can say x equals 5, y equals 12, and r equals 13. And since theta equals cosine inverse of 5 thirteenths, then sine of cosine inverse of 5 thirteenths is the same as sine of theta. Definition of sine is y over r. y is 12, r is 13. I know that went kind of quickly, but the truth is all we did was dissect the information we were given using what we know to get the answer that we wanted. Now, this process can be streamlined quite a bit. I want to show you how I eventually boil this down to something that doesn't take a lot of room and a lot of time. First, go to the inverse trig function and think about its definition of the trig function, not the inverse trig function. Cosine is x over r. So we can label the expression like this. Watch. Because cosine is x over, over r, I can put an x on top, r on the bottom. That reminds me that x is 5, r is 13. Now, the ratio is positive, so we're in quadrant one. And by the way, if the ratio is positive, we're always in quadrant one. It doesn't matter what inverse trig function you are. Uh, we will have x and y are both positive. R is always positive. If this weren't the case, if that ratio were not positive, we would have to determine the correct quadrant and deduce which part of the ratio is negative. If we were in quadrant two, x is negative, y is positive. If we were in quadrant four, x is positive, y is negative. You'll see an example of that shortly. But let's get back to this question. Next, we're going to set up the ratio for the trig function on the outside. Sine is y over r, so we're going to set it up like this. On the other side of an equal sign, we're going to set up a fraction and make note that y goes on top, r goes on bottom. Outer trig function tells you what to put there. Inner trig function tells you what to, how to dissect the given ratio. Outer trig function tells you how to reassemble a ratio. And of course, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. We know the value of x and r, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for y. We get 12 
technically from an algebraic perspective, plus or minus 12, this is why you got to stay cognizant of your quadrant. And now we can just build our answer. We have R is 13 and Y is 12. We're going to take a look at another one using this approach. Secant of cotangent inverse of negative five power, excuse me, of negative five fourths. Now we have to pay attention to the quadrants. Why? Because when we disassemble the five fourths using the definition of cotangent, we have to de we have to determine who gets the negative, the five or the four. Now we will evaluate this more efficiently. Start with the definition of cotangent. Definition of cotangent is x over y. So x on top, y on bottom. Now let's think about quadrants. The range of cotangent inverse is quadrants one and two. Go back and look at the table if you didn't know that. Since negative 5 fourths is negative, we use quadrant two. Remember, everything's positive in quadrant one. Now in quadrant two, x is less than zero and y is greater than zero. So the negative in front of the 5 fourths will go with the x. x is negative 5, y equals 4. Now on the right side, secant is r over x, so we're going to set that up. The outer trig function, we set up its ratio on the right side of the equal sign. And now we got to figure out what r is, but that's just the Pythagorean theorem. If we set it up with the given x and y, you should get r as the square root of 41. Remember, r is always positive. x and y can be negative dependent upon the quadrant. But now that we got r and we got the x, we can just substitute them and clean up our answer by putting the negative in front. I really think that this flow, where you go to the inner tr inverse trig function and look at it as a regular trig function to set up the ratio, to dissect the fraction into two parts by determining the correct quadrant, and then using the outer trig function to set up the ratio for your answer, Pythagorean theorem to get the missing piece and then build your answer. I think this is the most straightforward approach in my opinion. Now you try, pause the video and try the following. Spoiler alert, if you haven't paused the video yet, solutions in three, two, and one. For A, tangent is y over x, so 15 is y and, and 8 is x. The Pythagorean theorem gets us r equals 17. Cosine is x over r, so it's x over 17. Second one, you got to be a little more careful because of the square root. Using the inner trig function, secant is r over x, so r is 5 squared to 2 and x is negative 3. Mind your quadrant, but honestly, r is never negative. So if you have a negative ratio and one of the letters is r, the negative goes on the other. Using the Pythagorean theorem carefully, we get y is the square root of 41. And so cosecant is r over y, which ends up being 5 squared of 82 over 41.